Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to calculate the center of mass for a system of objects in physics. So this is one of the more niche topics in physics. It's kind of on its own. You don't talk about it for more than like 30 minutes in class. And then you go off on your own and you immediately get confused because what on earth are we doing? So here's what I'm going to say. First, the equation for center of mass. I'm going to call it XCM because X is like a distance and CM stands for center of mass. And the equation is fraction bar in the numerator M1X1, in other words, mass one times position X1 plus mass two X2 plus mass three X3 plus dot, dot, dot for as many masses as you have and then divided by the sum of all just the masses. So M1 plus M2 plus M3 plus dot, dot, dot. And if you only have two masses in your system, you don't even need the M3 or X3. And the other thing that's important for this equation is that you need to declare your zero point. Usually I declare the zero point as the leftmost point, but technically you can declare zero wherever you'd like. And we'll see that in an example. The other thing I wanna say is that this is for the X center of mass. We can also have a Y center of mass if it's two dimensions. And this equation is very similar, it's just m1y1 plus m2y2 plus m3y3 plus dot 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 divided by the sum of all the masses. So that's everything I have to say. Now let's look at a couple example problems with center of mass. So the first problem I have is it's a guy standing on a log and he's standing on one side of the log and I guess I should mention this is all happening in water. Let's say the mass of the guy is 40 kilograms and the mass of the log is 50 kilograms and we'll say the entire log is 10 meters long. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this guy walk from one end of the log to the other so that now he's standing on the other side. But the thing is what ends up happening is that because the center of mass is always conserved whenever you have objects on water and I don't have a good reason for that but I just know I've seen this so many times if you have an object on water and you're walking to the other side, then the center of mass for the system is conserved. And what that means is that as you walk to the right side, the log is going to move left. And so let me draw some dots showing you how much it moved. We moved this much, I'll call it distance D. And in this problem, you're gonna be solving for that distance D. And this makes sense by the way, because if you've ever been in the pool before and you jump off a raft when you're in the water, you jump forward, but what does the raft do? The raft goes backwards. And this is kind of the same theory as to what's going on here. So in order to solve this one, first I'm picking my zero point, which is gonna be my blue line here. And then I have to calculate the center of mass for the person log system. And here's how we're gonna do that. X center of mass equals mass one, which we'll say is the person, 40 times his position. His position is, he's at the zero at first. This is all the initial. So position zero, and then plus mass two, which is the mass of the log, 50, times the log's position. Now most of my students say that the log's position is 10 because the whole thing is 10 meters long, but that's wrong. We're considering the log as a point source of mass located exactly in the middle. This is what we always do. It's located exactly in the middle. And that distance is only five meters because I cut the 10 meters in half. So then that distance is five, so that's what I'll put in my equation. And then divided by the sum of all the masses. Mass 140 plus mass 250. So if I were to plug this into calculator, 40 times zero is zero, plus 50 times five is 250, divided by 40 plus 50, which is 90, and we'll get 2.78 meters as the center of mass. And now what I like to do is, I like to show where that 2.78 is on this diagram. So 2.78 is somewhere less than five, maybe it's about here. And this is going all the way down, extending down to the next picture too. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the center of mass is gonna be conserved. It's the same center of mass for both pictures. So then now, looking back down here, I'm gonna calculate the center of mass again for the second picture. You're probably gonna have trouble with this, no offense, but I'll help you. So first, it's the mass of the person times the distance of the person. We know the guy's mass is still 40 kilograms, 
And if you're one of my students, you'll say the distance or the position is 10 meters because he walks to the other side. And that's true and it's not true. It's true he walks to the other side, but the distance is not 10 meters. Why not? Because it's the distance from here to here, and this is not 10. This is gonna be equal to 10 minus D, because the whole thing is 10, and I'm subtracting D, this part of the log right here. So then plugging that in here, it's mass 40 times distance, 10 minus D. And then this is the part that really gets my students. It's the mass of the log 50 times this distance, and this is tough. So first, in green, I'm gonna label the center, which is at five meters away. Well, first, let me remove some of this because this is getting cluttered. And one thing I think I forgot to mention for the last one, it's always the distance measured from our zero point. Our zero cannot move. And so therefore, I'm looking for this distance in black, and that distance is five minus D. And if you don't see it, then, well, I guess just memorize it because it's gonna be this every time. So five minus D for the distance divided by the total mass, which is still 90, that is not changed. And if I reduce this and I try and you know distribute as much as I can, I'm gonna get 40 times 10, 400, minus 40D, plus 50 times five, 250, minus 50D, divided by 90. And remember, the center of mass is conserved because we're on water, so this is going to equal 2.78, the same 2.78 from before. And then if I wanna solve for D, I'm gonna combine like terms first in the numerator. 400 plus 250 is 650, and then negative 40D minus 50D, that's minus 90D, divided by 90 equals 2.78. And now the rest of this is algebra. Of course, a lot of my students are not good with algebra. So now I need to multiply both sides by 90 to get rid of that 90 in the denominator. So 2.78 times 90 is 250. I will add 90D to both sides and subtract the 250 from both sides, giving me 400 equals 90D. Divide both sides by 90, and we'll get a distance of 4.4 meters. That's how far the log moved. And that's it for that problem. In the next video, we'll see what we do when we have center of mass in two dimensions, X and Y. So stay tuned for that video. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.